We are going to be painting the Where Dreams Come True art kit here. So I got my kit out and I just like to set everything up just so I can kind of get an idea of what we're going to be painting and then um, which of the little extras I'm going to use in the final piece. So I can tell you a little bit about my setup here. I have just a piece of paper below where I'm going to be painting. And this is just because things can get a little messy, especially when we're painting um, all the little um, extras and then also the frame. So it's a good idea just to protect your table or your work surface. Um, you need a little palette for mixing. This is actually just an old plastic lid. Um, old ice cream pail lids or margarine lids work really good for this. You can also use a piece of tin foil, a piece of cardboard, just anything so we can mix our colors. I have a pencil and then I have a jar of water. Old pickle jars, jam jars, anything like that works good for this. Um, it is going to get a little messy, so I wouldn't recommend using a, a cup or jar from your kitchen. And I think we're ready to go. So, oh, and then um, other things included in the kit, we have the glue here. We have the string and the popsicle stick. We'll be using that last, so I just set that aside. And then we have all of our paints and our two brushes. So to start, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna open all my colors. So everything will be ready to go. And then what I like to do before I start painting, once I have my two layers lined up, I use a pencil and just draw around the inside of the frame. And then also just loosely around the castle. You don't have to worry too much about all those little towers. Um, but this just gives us an idea of what's actually gonna be shown. Uh, when we glue the second layer on because you don't really have to waste a lot of time painting anything that's going to be underneath the castle. So that's all we need the pencil for so I'm going to set that aside. I'm also just going to move all my little flowers and extras off to the side. My two are a little burnt. We had a little bit of a laser accident which is why I'm painting this kit but yours should look nice and not have any burn marks. Awesome. So we're going to take away the top layer and we're going to start with our background. So for the background, I'm just going to show you the first one I did here. I'm going to keep my color tones very similar to this one here, but feel free to do whatever you'd like. Get creative and do any sort of background or sky that you'd like, and you can also do any sort of color tone or color palette you'd like, but I'm going to keep mine uh, pretty traditional here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the same color tones here. So just to keep that in mind while I'm picking up my colors. So for the sky, I'm gonna start by pulling out just a good hunk of my blue. And I'm just gonna put that on my palette there. Wash my brush off. And just dab it dry. I'm also gonna pull out some green and I'm just gonna put it over here and then lastly I'm gonna pull out like a good bit of white here so I'm gonna put the the white there on my palette and then I'm gonna pull out another bit of white and I'm gonna put it over here on my palette so for the sky I'm gonna do an ombre effect and I'm gonna start with kind of a medium bluey turquoise and then I'm gonna work to white so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my darkest color and then that white's there so I can slowly be adding to it. So if you just bring just a little bit of your blue towards this white and then a little bit of your green towards this white. And then we're going to mix this all together and just kind of see what tone we end up with and see if we're on the right track. So in mixing color I always start with just a little bit of each just because you can get some interesting colors pretty quick and you don't wanna to waste too much paint 
if you don't quite get it right the first time. So this is a little bit turquoisey, so I'm going to add just a little bit more blue. I want it to be a little bit more blue, but it's a nice way to just slowly pull in colors and adjust. And adjust as you need it. Actually, yeah, that's a pretty fun, it's a pretty fun blue. It's a very like aqua-y ocean, ocean beach looking blue, which reminds me of California and Florida. So that's pretty perfect. Okay, so once you have your darkest color mixed, we're going to start by following along the edge. And you're going to want to go over the pencil mark we just made by about a, like a quarter of an inch. So just enough that everything's gonna be covered when we add that second layer on. And we're just gonna follow along. Just gonna show the water a little over. Perfect. And once we have a nice amount going all the way around there, I'm going to grab a bit of the white and I'm actually just going to mix it right into the blue I was just using and get just a little bit of a lighter tone here. That's looking pretty good. And you can kind of check it up against, against your other one here. So you want it to be along the same tone, but just a shade lighter. And then we're just gonna keep following along in this oval shape. And you can add water as you go. It'll make your, uh, your paint just a little bit more fluid. And follow this all the way along. Adding water as you go. Oh, and I ran out, so I just have to grab a little bit more white and mix just a little bit more. So once you have your shade lighter, touching your darker color all along here, we're gonna wash all the paint off of our brush. And then we want it to be quite wet. So it's dripping with water right now. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use that, the, the wet brush and go back and forth and wash it off if you end up getting too much of the lighter paint. So we're starting at the darker color and we're just moving it back and forth into the lighter color, and then we're working that light paint up as well. And wash your brush off if you end up getting too much of the lighter paint on. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to blend these two together. And lots of water is key here. And starting in the darker and working your way out to the lighter is key as well to slowly blend that paint in. I'm just gonna work, work it all back and forth. until that is nice and blended. And the next we're gonna go, and I'm gonna take just my pure white, and just like we did with the last color, I'm gonna use the pure white and paint up all the way and fill in the rest of the gaps 
to our medium color. And then, as you can see, our, our pencil lines here, you don't have to go too crazy painting anything here because that's all going to get covered by the castle. But I am going to want to just make sure there's enough paint in between the towers. And I'm going to grab just a little bit more white here. So just enough paint in between all the towers there. And once you have good coverage with your white, going up to your blue, we're going to wash off all of that paint. And with our really, really wet brush again, we're going to start going back and forth up in the medium turquoise and just work down into the white and then back and forth and really blend those two together. If you're not getting a good blend, the key is water and washing your brush. So I wash mine pretty often, get it wet, start with the darker color again, and then work my way back and forth. And just keep working it in until you're happy with the amount that it's blending. I think I need just a little bit more white down here. I see my pencil line come up to about there. So I'm just going to make sure I got enough coverage here and also here. There we go. I don't think I came down far enough the first time. Just keep working your brush through. You can bring a little bit of that white up and into the turquoise. Really have fun with, with blending all these colors around and, and really mixing them together. And once again, starting in my dark and working my way back and forth into that white. If you get too much paint on your brush, just remembering to give it a wash. And you can either work up and down or side to side. I do like to mostly work side to side because you get a little bit more of a natural look to it. But if you are getting a little bit of kind of splotchy white, you can also work side to side just to get that water in there and then go back and forth just to just to blend it in. And then once you're kind of getting happy with your sky, one thing I like to do is grab my second layer and just gently place it over top. Your paint will be wet below, but it's not going to be so wet that it's going to affect anything. But now you can kind of just see if there's any little spots you missed or how you like what is, um, what is going to be exposed here. So I just noticed I'm a little bit splotchy in between these towers with my white. So I'm just going to pull that off and I'm going to add, oh, I grabbed my wrong brush here. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more white. And just do the same thing again on any little spots that looked like they could use. Just a little bit more TLC.
and then starting with my, my dark area, bringing that brush back and forth. gonna do another little check here and that's looking pretty good so there we have a nice just a nice simple natural sky looking background and one thing you can do if you would like is using your white and if you kind of just mix it around in here you can add little bits of cloud if you would like to add so it's not just a an ombre background and you can just use the side of your brush. And this is quite dry, so I just dipped it right into my paint. And just use the side of your brush and you can just add a few little details here and there if you'd like it to look a bit more like a Bit more like there's clouds in the sky. And there's very little paint on my brush with doing this. If you would like really drastic clouds, you want to use quite a bit of paint on your brush, but if you want something just light and subtle, I'm using the very edge of my brush, the very flat bit, and I have just a very small amount of paint, and I'm just dabbing that on the background, just adding a little bit of interest. Wherever you would like to go. Perfect. And I think that is all I'm going to add. I do want to keep it nice and simple in the background just because there's so much detail in the castle that I really want to be the focus of the piece. Perfect. Okay. So, once you're happy with your background, we will set this one aside and we will grab our main piece here. And I'm going to start with doing the, the frame and then all the tops of the towers. I want to do this in a nice medium blue. So let's start by mixing our medium blue. And it's nice because we do have a lot of the colors we're gonna need already on our palette. So one thing I'm gonna grab is I'm put my corner just in a little bit of black here. And I'm just gonna put that on the side of my palette here. And I'm gonna take all that this blue that's sitting here. So if you didn't have any blue on your palette, you want a good little, good little chunk of blue. And I'm actually just going to mix this in with a little bit of this turquoise we were just using. I'm going to mix all this to kind of together. So if you're starting fresh, you're going to want quite a bit of blue, just a little bit of green, and then a little bit of white. I'm just going to mix all that together. And that's very much the color I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna need quite a bit because I'm doing the frame. So I'm gonna just go in and grab a bit more blue and a little bit more green. 
but that's very much the tone that I'm looking for. And I'm just going to pull all this in and mix this around. And one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just a little bit of black. I'm talking just a very tiny bit and it's just going to darken this up just a little bit to make it a little bit more of a darker blue, but we don't want it to be too dark. And yeah, so once you get to the blue that you uh, that you're looking for, I'm going to start by just working on my towers here. So I'm going to do all of my front towers. And follow along and go right to your engraved line. Don't worry too much if you end up going over the lines a little bit. Because we're going to be bringing in some gray later, we can always touch it up if you go over your lines. So, And this is why we have a piece of paper behind as well, because this gets a little bit messy. And I'm just going to go along and paint all of the roofs. And if you want to switch to your smaller brush, now is kind of a good time. So I'm going to leave this brush ready to go with the blue just because I'm going to need it again right away. But I am going to switch to my smaller brush here. I'm just going to dip it in some water and I'm just going to roll it around in the blue. I find when I'm working with the small brush, if you give it a, a little bit of a roll, you get a nice, a nice fine tip on the, uh, the edge of the brush. And that'll make it just a little bit easier for following along these lines. Gives you just a little bit more control. And you'll have to go and frequently dip your brush in paint. And if it's quite dry, adding little bits of water is really going to help make it flow. And don't worry too much if you get a little messy here. We will fix all that later. And then I'm going to go over it and do this little roof here. So once we have all our upper towers done, I'm also going to do the main roof here to the entrance in this blue. I'm just going to grab a little bit of water so I can get a nice precise end to my brush here. And the engraved lines make it nice and easy to follow along in these small areas here.
And I'm also going to paint inside this little detail of the roof blue as well. And then lastly, I'm going to do the roofs on top of all of these little turrets. Which is the tops of the roofs here, and then also the top of the wall here. And then just follow the turrets in the wall all the way along. And don't worry too much if you do end up painting the wrong thing the wrong color. The one nice thing, not the one nice thing, I love acrylic paint, but the best thing about acrylic paint is if you make a mistake, you can just paint over it. You can paint over it as many times as you'd like. So if at any point you don't like the color of something, all you have to do is wait for the paint to dry and then just put another coat on top in whatever color you'd like. So. You can't really make a mistake when you're painting with acrylic because you can always fix it later. So I think that is all of the roofs that I'm going to be painting blue. I'm going to save this one here and I'm going to do that one in, um, in gold, the very top roof. So I'm going to just wash my little detail brush and put it aside. And then I have my big brush sitting in my blue here, so I'm just going to get it, get it wet and there we go, just make sure it didn't dry out. And now I'm gonna follow along and I'm gonna do my frame. And now you can do your frame whatever color you'd like, so you feel free to get creative here. But I, uh, I like how this blue is gonna get pulled out. Pulled out with the towers and then the light blue on the background, so you can just follow along. And then, yeah, make sure you have something underneath as you'll get the paint. You can get the paint everywhere doing this. And then I'm also just painting the inside of the lip on this frame, just the blue as well. It'll just finish it off nicely. And I like to paint the outside of the frame once everything's all glued together. So I'm not going to worry too much about that now, just because then you can paint um, the edge of both layers and it'll make it look nice and neat. So if you're going along an engraved line in a large surface like this, I like to use the very edge of my brush and I run it 
side to side like this. And what that does is it gives quite a nice straight line and you can just work the paint back and forth. Now, once again, you don't have to worry too much because we're gonna be painting this, you can always fix it up, but you can just swipe your brush back and forth to get a nice straight line along areas like that. Oops. I'm just going to get the inside of this one. Go. And then once you're done all your blue, you can wash your brush off. make sure it's nice and clean and dry. I'm just going to kind of shimmy my my palette so I just have some more room for mixing some some new colors here. So next I'm going to do the furthest away here. So I'm going to do light pink for the base of my castle. Um, I've seen it depicted in both light pink and also in a cream color so feel free whichever you'd prefer to do. I'm going to do a light pink but if you want to do a cream you're going to do exactly what I'm doing. So you're going to take a pretty good chunk of white. And I'm going to add just a little bit of red, but if you want to do it a cream color, just add a little bit of this um, of this yellow here. And I'm just going to wash my brush off to not contaminate my color. And I'm just going to grab just a little bit of red, and I'm going to put it on my palette over here, just so I don't mix too much in at once. So I have a very small amount on my brush, and I'm just going to mix that in and kind of see what color I get. I'm looking for a very pale pastel-y pastel pink. Well, that's looking pretty good. And if you want it to be a little bit dustier, you can just add the tiniest amount of black and it will just make it a little bit more of a dusty pink. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna just put the very corner and I'm talking like, if you could see there, a very small amount of black in this light of pink. Black is a very potent color, so you can, uh, you can change your color pretty quick if you end up grabbing a little too much. So there we go. That's a nice, a nice dusty pink, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to go along. and get all of my towers painted. And when you get to little areas like that, it is good to switch brushes to your little detail brush. And you can go back and forth between your two brushes. I'm just gonna follow along. And make sure your frame is dry before you get your sleeve in your uh, before you get your sleeve in your frame. I was gonna say mine's pretty dry, but you always got to be aware when you're painting something up a little higher like this.
and I'm going to leave this entire tower. I'm actually going to paint that a cream color. So I'm going to paint the light pink just on the base of the castle. And on this little tower up here. And dipping in water as you need to, especially once you get to little areas like this. That little bit of extra water is just going to help get the paint into a nice fine point on your brush. And I'm just going to switch brushes. And this one's just a little bit more coverage when you get to large areas. And then with the, the pink here, I'm also going to paint just behind the clock on this main roof. And then I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to grab just the pure mustard yellow here. I'm going to put a little bit on my palette and I'm going to paint my top roof. So adding a little bit of water to the paint. And then with this yellow here, I'm just going to switch back to my flat brush. And I'm going to pull in a good chunk of white. I'm 
I'm just going to slowly pull that yellow in until I get a nice cream color. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paint this whole tower. Uh, maybe a little bit more of the yellow. That's good there. And don't worry too much about getting just in this area there because we will come over with the uh, the dark yellow and fix that up and then also our roofs will we'll do another coat of uh, another coat of blue just to make sure everything is nice and uh, nice and solidly filled I'm going to switch to my small brush and just get in all these little nooks. Okay, and then once your towers are all done, we're going to do the uh, the front gates here, and we're going to mix a nice light gray. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to grab another good little bit of white, and I'm going to grab just a small amount of black. So if you can see there, it's about one black to about five white. We're just going to mix that all together. Oh, and that's actually a little dark, so I'm just going to wash my brush off. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to grab another, grab another amount of white. And just lighten that up a little bit. I really want it to match the, the lighter tones that I mixed for the other parts of the castle, so. Once you get a gray that you're happy with, we are going to go ahead and base coat the front of the gates here. And I'm going to use my big flat brush to get the, the main part of this done, but I'm going to leave all those little bits and I'll switch to my smaller brush. So only base coat what you're comfortable doing with your big brush and then we can make the switch for the little one. And for this line here, I'm actually just going to go kind of right up and over it with the gray, just because we'll be filling that with a darker color afterwards. So that'll be easy to easy to cover up. And then I'm also going to paint the gray on the inside of inside of the front gate as well.
if you run out of color, just go ahead and mix a little bit more. So I've got some white there and I'm just going to grab a little bit of black that I had on my palette here before. And I'm going to switch to my smaller brush here, add a little bit of water into my paint. And I'm going to start the furthest away, just because the more paint you get over here, the more likely you are to get it on your wrist or your hands. So using your small brush, just fill in all the little bits. I'm also going to fill in just the top above this little detail here. Go. And then continuing over to this area. And while your grays mix, just go over any little bits that look like they might need a little bit of a second coat or any of the little details you missed. Perfect. And then once your gray is done there, kind of one of the last colors we need to base coat is inside the door in the base here, but I'm going to do that last just so it has time to dry. So the last is going to, we're going to go back into this, this mustard yellow here. And I want this, I'm not going to dilute it with any water. I want this to be actually quite thick. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to add it to the top of this roof here. So I'm just going to add a straight line. And then I'm also going to fill this into these two little towers poking up. And then also on this little detail, and this just takes a little bit of patience to stay within the lines and adding this yellow. Okay. 
bring that up in and around the detail of the front gate. And then also the little side details with the spikes here. I'm going to add this all the way down along the sides as well. Go grab some more if you need just a little bit more. And all the way down. Once you have all that tiny little detail in the gold, I'm going to go in and just grab some pure white. And I'm just going to get this little detail, the little detail on the cream colored tower. And then also the clock. Just gonna get a coat of white on that as well. Perfect. And then lastly to base coat we have our little gate and then our um, the front of the, the castle there. So the gate, I'm actually just going to go in and I'm going to use our brown here. So if you grab a little bit of the burnt umber, and I'm going to put that on the palette just so I can kind of work it out. And then glob that on there. Actually, I'm gonna switch to my little detail brush just to make it a little bit easier getting these fine details. And then now's a good time if you do notice, while my pink is still wet, if you notice any little bits that kind of just need a second coat, or where you didn't get quite far enough in, or maybe where you went a little bit over the lines on your paint, now is kind of a good time just to do a last, one last little check on your base coat.
And then there was quite a few little spots I just went over on my roof here. So I'm just going to take my detail brush and very carefully go along and just fix up anywhere where I went over. And if you don't have any of the color left, just take the time to mix a little bit more and touch up. That's looking pretty good. Might just grab a little more yellow and just do a second coat on my last little tower here. And once everything is looking good, oh, of course I saw one last little thing. And then once you have everything base coated nicely, we'll do our front of the castle here. I'm just going to do a dark gray just to keep it really neutral because I'm going to put all my little extras in front of it. But if you wanted, you could do um, like a green for grass or you could even do a blue for, uh, for a little lake in front. So feel free to do whatever color you'd like here. You could even do like a fun color like a like a pink or something, but I'm just gonna keep it nice and neutral. So I'm gonna grab some uh, some black and I'm just gonna mix this in with the gray that I already have in this area. And that's about what I'm looking for there. It's just like a, a dark medium gray. I'm gonna have to grab a bit more white and a bit more black because this is a little bit of a surface to cover. And a little bit of black. Or if you mix too much of one color, this is also a good, a good time to use it up on this area. And then I'm just going to use the top of my brush again. And you can kind of practice below here, sliding across and getting this nice crisp line for the ground. And I'm doing the same technique here along the edge where I'm just swiping my brush back and forth and I just go right up to that engraved line. And I'm going to need just a little bit more gray. So I'm going to grab some more white and just a little bit more black and mix all that in.
And this new gray is a little later than the, the gray that I originally mixed, but don't worry too much about it. You can always use a little bit of water and make the two blend together. Or I actually have enough that I can kind of just do a second little coat over all this. And I'm going to grab just a little bit of black just because I do want it to be darker right up against the castle there. It's just you can use a little bit of black just to... My new gray kind of blends a little bit with that castle. Just get that nice crisp line all the way across and then I'm just gonna kind of blend my two grays. Get the wrong little bit there. Perfect. And that is our base coat done on our second layer. So I'm just going to set this one aside to dry. And then I'm going to grab all my little extras. And we're going to base coat these ones next. And then by the time we're done base coating this, our first two layers will be dry and then we can go in and do all our little, all our little shade and highlight details. Okay. So for my flowers, I'm actually going to mimic the, the pink that I did on the castle. So I'm just going to mix more of that pink here. Just gonna wash my brush off. Go in for some more white. I might make it just a little darker than what I ended up doing on the castle, but I do like that light dusty rose pink. Oh, and we're gonna need quite a bit of it, so I'm gonna go back in and grab a bit more white. And that should be a good amount. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of a little bit of that red, and then I'm gonna grab, and I'm just gonna come over here and I'm just gonna grab some of that black to add in to give it that dusty, that dusty tone, and I'm gonna mix this all together. It's a touch dustier than I'd like, so I'm just going to go and grab a little bit more red. And just keep mixing until you get whatever color you want for your, for your flowers. I like to paint all my extras just because when I'm done doing the detail on the castle, it, it's nice to be able to play around with all the little, all the little additions. So I just paint everything even though it, even if I'm not going to use everything you see here. So I'm going to start with the flowers, so I'm just going to move that down. And then... And don't worry too much about the engraved lines. Once this paint dries, the engraved lines are still going to be very easy to see, even with the paint covering them. So we're just going to give this just a nice... nice little base coat here. And that's a nice... that's a nice pink, actually. I'm liking that. And this poor flower got 
run over by the, the laser engraver while it was cutting, so we got some bad burn marks, but it's a nice thing about the acrylic is it's just going to cover it up like it never happened, so. I'm going to have the perfect amount of pink to base coat all these. I'm really glad that worked out. It's nice when you mix just the right amount of paint. And then what, for the flowers, I do just like to give the edges just a little, just a little bit of a coat as well. But that's optional. But if I have some paint, some paint left, it's kind of nice just to give them a little bit of love. And if you left any fingerprints on the front, just give them a little bit of a little bit of a base coat just to blend them in at all. Okay, so our flowers are looking pretty good here. So I'm gonna do the little leaves and I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna try to mimic the, the tone of the yellow and the pink, but I'm gonna do it with the green and I actually have some green on my palette here that's not dried up yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and I'm gonna put it just beside it. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of this gray that's left over. And if you don't have any gray left over, you can grab just a touch of black on the, the corner of your brush. And I'm gonna just grab little bits of green at a time and mix it in with this white. I'm not gonna go too crazy at first just cause I wanna really pastel -y. Just a touch more than that. There we go. And once you got a green that you like, got a nice, yeah, nice like minty green going on there. And actually, smarter, I'm gonna paint, paint my little edges first.
Perfect. And I'm just going to set that one aside. And we got our little banner here. So I'm just going to make sure that my, uh, my area here is dry. So I actually like the, uh, the natural wood on the banner. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside of the lettering with black. So I'm going to use, I should clean this brush and not leave it in the water. I'm going to use my, my thin detail brush. And I'm going to pull just a nice bit of black out here. And I'm going to add a little bit of water just to get it at a nice, a nice fine point. And this does take a little bit of patience. But if you just follow along, and get your uh, get your brush to a really nice fine point. Now you can paint the back of your banner if you'd like. I just like the natural wood, the natural wood look. So I'm going to leave mine, leave mine wood, and then I'm going to yeah just carefully go along. And then it's all about the water and rolling your brush to get that nice fine point. And then just follow along on the inside. And this is a little bit of a tedious, a little bit of a tedious one. So if you're not going to use your banner, feel free to, to go ahead and you can go back and do any other base coating that you may have uh, you may have missed. Perfect. So, all my lettering is done. And it's pretty good timing because 
by the time you're done doing all your little lettering there, I'm just gonna shimmy all these over, all of our layers should be dry. Acrylic dries nice and quick. So I'm just gonna bring everything back. I'm gonna layer it all up. And take a look at how we're doing. So I'm gonna leave my little extras for now and I'm gonna go ahead and add all the details into the castle. So I'm gonna start at the very top and um, I'm gonna start with, with shading. So with shading, the key is black paint and it's quite a bit of water. So I'm just gonna kind of shimmy over here a little bit and I'm gonna move this brush out of the way. So you're gonna wanna dip your brush in the water and you're gonna want to slowly pull your black into the water. And you're gonna want it to be quite watery. So if you can see on the paper there, it's showing up as almost like a light gray. So this is the black, the black paint coming in just as is. So we want enough water mixed with our black paint that we're getting a nice light gray when it dries. So feel free just to test on your test on your paper there before going on to your piece. But we're gonna start with our very little top tower here. And we're just gonna follow the shape and bring a couple lines from the top down. And if you do it, and if it looks a little dark for you, don't worry, this is actually gonna dry lighter. You can just use your finger just to kinda tone it down a little bit. And that's looking, that's looking pretty good there. So once again, we have our nice, our nice light gray because that is gonna dry and it is gonna be quite a bit more subtle. So I'm just gonna add those little lines in there and then I'm gonna follow along and I'm gonna add just a little shadow line to anything that would be casting, that would be casting a shadow. So I'm gonna follow along the side of the, the tower and underneath the tower. And I'm gonna actually continue this line underneath the full tower. This panel here, because this is, um, that would be like octagonal. We're just gonna follow along the other side here as well. And in behind these little, these little white peaks. So really we just wanna add this little bit of a shadow line to anything that is in the background. And then we're gonna be adding a highlight line to this too which is also gonna to tone it down. So don't worry too much if, it, if it's a little dark right now. I'm gonna add this little bit of a shadow to the inside of these little, little windows. And then I'm also gonna add it underneath this lip here. And if it's looking a little darker than you'd like, just add a little bit more water and you want a very small amount of paint. So I'm just gonna bring that detail down to connect with the lines below and then follow along with my, I'm gonna do the same as I did above where I'm following along the side of the engraved line on this side. And I'm also gonna follow along on this other side here. And that's shading done on, on our first tower there. So make sure you keep adding water and keep testing. Keep testing on here that it, it starts off quite a bit dark, but then it does, it does dry to this light gray. And I'm just gonna go along 
and I'm going to go all underneath this cream tower. So following along the engraved line. And just continue in that style. And once again, if there's a little too much water, just tap your finger and just absorb some of it. And once it dries, it'll be quite a bit more subtle. See, and I got too much water there, so now I just gotta... It's finding that, that balance. I'm gonna go on top of the... top of those and underneath. And I'm gonna outline the outside of this little tower. And also underneath these towers. Because this gate is in front of the entire back of the castle, we'll continue this shade line open. A little too much water, so just use your finger. And I'm just going to follow along this entire front gate of the castle as well. And then once you have all along this, this whole front gate, this little tower would be in front of the rest of the castle. So I'm just going to follow along the outside of that one. And then also with this roof, we'd have a shadow casting down here. Hoping I had a little too much water. And then this would be in front of these here. So I'm actually just going to add a shadow to this whole little section. And then I'm going to do the same for this little tower and I'm going to follow that all the way along to the top. So as you're looking at it, if any of your shadows are a little bit too dark or spread too far, we're just going to want to get our brush wet and there's no paint on my brush right now. So just a wet brush. And you can actually run it along the side of what we just painted and it will blend it out just a little bit. So just a little bit of water on my brush and that's it. And just go along your, your little shadow lines and you can just, even if it's dry, you just kind of got to rub your bristles and it will pick up and, and just blend in a little bit more. But once we add our highlight lines, they're not gonna look as, as harsh, so don't worry about it too much right now. Awesome. So we look like we got a nice amount of shadow on our whole base of our castle there. So I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to do the highlights and we're going to completely finish this little section of castle and then and then I'll do the front gate after but let's finish up this so we can we can see what we look like here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab black paint with water but I actually do want it to be to be black. Um, actually what I'm going to add just a little bit of white to mine. I'm just going to mix it over here. So I'm just going to make like a dark gray almost. I'm just going to grab a little bit more white. So we're going to take a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and we're going to make a dark gray. And with this, I'm just going to add a few little details onto the top of our castle here. So on this little tower here, I'm going to use my brush and I'm just going to make a couple little windows. So this is just some fun little details to 
to really make it look a little bit more realistic. So just using the edge of my brush, just gonna add three little windows in there. This little tower here, I'm just gonna add a little rectangle, a nice larger window, and grab water and grab a little bit more paint as you need it. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make two little rectangles below one another here. And then on this little tower, just the edge of my brush, putting almost little dots here. I'm gonna make little windows and you can just add in little windows wherever you would like. So these just really make it look a little more realistic. And a little window in here. And then a couple windows in there. And then while I have this dark gray paint, I am just gonna follow along the top of this little detail here. I'm gonna pull in just a little more black. I just really want to show off that little bit of a detail there. And then I also just want to add a little bit of a darker shade. So right now I'm just using black and it has a little bit of water, but I really do want it to be, to be black paint. So I'm adding just a few little black lines here and there just to really show off the shade and I'm sticking really close to that engraved line. So what we did here is a really wide casting shadow where here we just want to add just a little black line around a couple little details just to really show what's in front of what. So I'm just gonna with my brush follow along a couple of these engraved lines I'm going to also follow this all along our cream colored tower and on this side of the cream colored tower. So this is just a more detailed shade. And then as your windows dry, if you need any other little extras, you can just Darken them up a little if you want to add a little bit of a, of a shadow anywhere. I usually like to add one to the, uh, to the left side and then to the top. And then same within here, I'm just going to add it and just kind of fall around to the left. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to add just on the one side of these little white towers. And here I'm just really kind of taking a step back from my piece and just seeing if there's any little areas I'd like to accentuate the depth on. Oh, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to just a little bit. Any of these little towers that have the engraved lines, you can just follow along the engraved line. And that just really, really adds that depth. Perfect. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, I might do the same thing around. around this roof as well. And then just along the top. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
So now that we've done our, our first light shade with the really watery black, and then we've went and gone and done a second shade with a thin black line, which is a little bit darker, we're gonna go through and we're gonna do some highlights. So I just cleaned off my brush. So all the black is gone. And we're gonna just grab some white. And if you have anywhere left on your palette without paint, try to find a little spot. I got a little spot right here. So I'm gonna put the white here. I'm actually not gonna water down my white. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my dark highlights first. So just get a little bit of white paint on the end of your brush. And we're gonna start with this tower up here. And for this tower, it has some really cute little details. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add little spots. So with the edge of your brush, just tap it onto your piece and follow along those black lines that we made with the shadow. And we're just gonna add little dots all the way up that black line. And we're gonna do that with every single line and it's just gonna show off the little detailing on that roof. So I did three little black lines, so I just followed along there and it's just gonna add a little bit of texture to that roof. And then while we have our white, I'm also gonna run my brush just along the edge and really showing that, that edge off there. And then I'm gonna follow along these little spikes that are coming up from the tower and add just a little bit of white detail to them. And we can also add it to the left side of the piece as well. And then going down the tower, I'm just gonna run the white just along the left side and then on the front part of that little tower there. And then also on this middle panel, I'm gonna run a little bit of white in there and a little bit of white and I'm using my brush just on the edge of the wood cut out. And I'm just wanting to show off the left edge. So right now we're thinking that the sun is about, about here. So I'm gonna go along the left edge of most of the piece and just really show off that edge with a little bit of white. And you can just continue down the tower. We're gonna to add a little bit to the top up here. And just dabbing little bits of white. Little bits of white until you have a nice amount of highlight and things are really standing out on that tower. And we're gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna start with this little tower here. So I'm gonna use the edge of my brush and I'm gonna just add a couple little spots like we did on the one tower, just to the edges of here. I'm gonna follow that right down along the side. And then if you're, um, if the gray you put on the two windows here is dry, I'm actually gonna add a little line directly through the middle of across and down. And just adding in a little bit of a window detail. Well, my bottom one's not quite dry, so it's kind of smudging together. So you can always touch that up and add a little bit more white once that's dry, but just to add a little bit more detail in your, uh, your windows. I'm gonna use this white and follow along the top. 
So pretty much wherever we put a solid black line, on the opposite side, we're gonna wanna add a white line to show the highlight. So we're also gonna add this to the left side of this tower. And we're gonna bring that white in into the, the middles of the tower there as well. And then I'm gonna do the same on the roof where I'm just running my brush along the left, the left side, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this little roof here. And this one here, I'm actually gonna do it on the right side as well, just because this roof is in front of this tower. So I'm just gonna follow along. and show off that this roof and this little, that little spike there is in front, along the top there. Perfect. Once that side's looking good, we'll head over and we'll do this side. And same thing on the uh, left side here. Just add little bits of white detail. on the left side of this tower. Yeah, just a little bit up here. So I'm kind of just bouncing around and highlighting. I'm also gonna follow along this little bit of detailing on the bricks here. And any of the lines in here and now I'm just dabbing. This is actually quite dry and I'm just going to dab just a little bit just to highlight the middles of any of the large areas and really show off. Really show off the highlight there. Now I'm going to come touch up my little window here just because my gray wasn't dry. It looks to be dry now so I'm just going to add in. Yeah, there we go my white paint and add a little cross and then I'm just gonna outline the windows with that little bit of weight as well. There we go. So we are looking pretty good on the back of our on the back of our castle. So next, we're gonna do our front gate here. So for the front gate, I like to do a little bit of brickwork. So we're gonna come back to our black paint here and I'm gonna get it watery, but not as watery as we had it before. So I'm just gonna show you there. So it's a nice watery fluid black, but we don't want it to be as transparent as what we were doing our shadows with. So we want it to be just really nice and um, just really nice and fluid and almost like a medium, a medium gray. And then with all the detail in the front, now this is optional. So if this is not within your, um, within your comfort, the gray as is does look really nice and you can just go through and add a little bit of shadows but if you want to try out um, some brickwork, I'm going to add a line to the middle of this gray turret there. And then with bricks, you really just add vertical lines. So I just split that into three sections. And then the one below, I'm going to add just one line in the middle. And that's really all there is to brick. So I'm just going to go along and break that into three parts again with just a little vertical line. And then 
you're just adding the line below. So I can show you on here as well. So when we add our lines in, you really want to make little rectangles. And then on the brick below, because you added the line here and here, you want to add the line right in the middle of the other two lines, if that makes sense. And then you're just going to want to space them out like that. So if you follow along your little brickwork along here, and this part actually is going to be in shadow. So I'm just going to do this all in gray. And then I'm going to continue the bricks. So what I usually do is I, I like to add all my horizontal lines. So just follow along with your horizontal lines. And then starting at the top, I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm just going to space and add two little lines there. And then I'm just going to continue this pattern all the way down. So bricks are actually quite easy. It's just time consuming, but I actually find bricks really relaxing to paint. So once we have our bricks there, I'm actually just going to follow along this engraved line because this tower is going to be the furthest back. So I'm just going to follow along and just add, and I'm going to make this little piece of one shadow as well. And make that in shadow. And then now we'll just continue our brickwork. So with this tower here, I'm going to just cut this right in half. And And I'm going to put this little bit all in shadow. I'm going to cut this one right in half. Slice it into three bricks. And then just adding my lines in below. And then this one will all be in shadow. And add water to your black as you need to. And we want to keep this, this nice fluid, this nice fluid black. And you don't have to be perfect with the bricks. That's kind of the nice thing with bricks too, is because no brickwork is, is perfect. And I'm going to slice this one into three. And it's actually quite relaxing. Oh, and I got my hand in my black paint there. And as you can see, like these ones were bigger than before, but once it's all brick and pattern, any of these little details you're not gonna notice. There we go. And I'm gonna add this line all along here as well because this tower would be in front of this wall. I'm gonna shade this out. And we're gonna add our little horizontal lines in here as well. And I'm actually going to do that just as one whole brick in there, just because it's nice and easy. So we're just going to continue this brickwork. Now this little bit of a wall would actually be behind the tower. So we're going to add, we're just going to add our little shadow line in there. And then this one will be in shadow. We can cut this in half. And add our little bricks in. And same here, I'm just going to cut the one in half and then add some shadow onto the other side of the little gate here. 
And I'm going to continue this little brick pattern inside the gray that we put here as well. So I'm just going to just really lightly add those lines in here. And then just slice all these up. I hope you guys like bricks as much as I do after doing this. I find any repetition in painting like this just really relaxing. Painting grass also is very relaxing. But I've always really enjoyed doing bricks. So I'm just going to follow along these gold spikes and just add a little bit of shadow as well. And we're just going to continue all the way along. So this one's all going to be in shadow. So I always like to paint that first, just so I don't end up doing all that nice little brickwork in here, and then it just gets covered. And then here, I'm just going to slice that in half. Oh, I'm a little watery, so I'm just going to tap it on my paper towel. And that's nice there. And then... Add all my lines in. And I'm also going to add that little shadow line behind that turret there. I always like to slice the top one into three and then just follow the pattern below. And I'm just going to shade that one out. And then on the right side of this engraved line, and then also on the right side of the little wall here, because this little tower would be the furthest back. And then this one would be shaded. This one. And this one. And don't worry if your bricks are different sizes. I think it adds character when there's lots of variation in the bricks. And follow this along. Perfect. And once we got a little bit of brickwork done, well, I actually have my uh, my shady black. I'm just gonna run my brush along here. Oops. 
just because I got some of my lines down into here. So I'm just gonna run my brush and just shade that out there. And that looks pretty good. So now with watery black, so just like what we were doing before, so light, light gray watery black. Looking pretty good there. I'm just gonna, anywhere where we added this little bit of a line, I'm just gonna run the side of my brush with that watery black. And I'm just gonna blend it a little bit more into that brickwork that we just did. So nice watery brush. And I know it seems a shame to cover up some of the bricks we just worked on, but adding these little bits of shadow here and there in the bricks is going to make them look more realistic. And just kind of run your brush along. And I'm just going to kind of shade this out just a little bit. And then. Here as well. Just kind of make these, oh, it's a little dark, but make your bricks look just a little bit more grubby almost. You kind of just want to add just little bits here and there. You don't really want perfect bricks because they won't look realistic in here. So you just want to add little bits of black here and there and kind of make them look a little bit like the grout's coming out a little bit and I'm going to follow this along here as well. And add that into a little bit of shadow. Perfect. And then once you have a nice amount of shade and, and your bricks are looking a little bit more realistic, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to highlight just like what we did on the castle. So I'm going to grab some white paint here and I am going to water this down just a little bit. And I'm just going to follow and just highlight the top corner of just a few bricks that are gonna be the ones, especially on these two towers, and then ones kind of near the edge where the light would be hitting. So I'm just gonna add a little bit in the middle, in the middle here, because these ones would be the most in the, uh, the most in the sun, and I'm just gonna continue all the way up the tower. I'm gonna add this white highlight onto the roof and this roof as well. And then just a little bit in the brickwork. And it doesn't just have to be in the corner. You can kind of smudge the paint out just a little bit and really show that off. Perfect. And we're gonna do the same thing but just along the side there. So we're working on the left side of this engraved line. And then we're also gonna wanna do it kind of on the very edge of this tower. And just kind of run your brush along the side of it and down. The roof is fully exposed, so we're gonna stick to the left side. Here is just because it's the edge, so a little bit of that would end up getting in the um, in the sun. And I'm gonna add just a little bit, just on the middle bricks, just here, just because it's a large surface area, so there wouldn't be too much shadow cast on either side of there. And then we can also follow along our gold pillar on the inside and just add A little bit of highlight there as well. And 
And then we're going to go ahead on this tower and add some light to the middle bricks. Really play around with your uh, your highlights and and experiment. And if you end up adding too much white or too much black, it's easy to fix. So if you add a little too much white, all you have to do is come back in with your black, and you just have to shade it out just a little bit if you're not happy with the uh, with the direction it's going. So don't be scared to play around because levels and levels of highlight and shade is what makes it look more and more realistic. So just following along the left side for these towers as well. And this little one here. And I'm going just on the right side of this engraved line, just like we did on this side. And then I'm going to do the same thing just along the edge of this one. Kind of spread that out. I'm going to go on the very edge of this tower. And also add a little highlight all the way to the top. And that's really just going to make this, this tower stand out as the one that's the most in front are these two here. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the engraved line on this one. Let's just run a little bit of white. here as well. Perfect, we are looking pretty good here. Oh, just a little bit of detail on just the bottom and the tops of, of these little roofs that are flat in here. And now you can kind of just go along adding little bits of highlight. Oop, a little too much water. So I'm just going to spread out the little bit of um, little bit of highlights I did on the roofs. So I'm just using the side of my brush, and I'm using watery white, just like the really watery black we used. I'm just going to add just a little bit more of a highlight to the roof. I'm just going to follow that along and continue all the way up. Just giving those just a little bit more depth. And then I'd like this roof to stand out just a little bit more. So I'm going to get white and a little bit of water, and I'm just going to follow along the inside of that one there. And that's quite watery, so it will dry just a little bit less. Um, while I have my white, I'm actually just going to grab a little bit more paint. So I want a little bit more paint than water for this part. This little bit of the blue detail inside the gold. I'm just going to go and I'm going to make just a little pattern in there to make this a little more interesting. So I'm just going to go diagonally with my white. And then I'm going to go diagonally the other way. It's just to make just a few little interesting details. It's really going to make your piece stand out. And I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight to the, to the yellow here as well. Oh, and we have our tiny little clock we have to add a little bit of detail with as well. So I'm just gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna grab some black paint and I'm just gonna add two little hands and I'm just gonna follow along and add a very faint line in 
around the clock. But for this, whatever you're comfortable doing, I'm just going to add the little ticks on the clock. Looks pretty good. This is where you can really start making your your piece your own by adding little details here and there. I'm gonna go and I'm actually gonna these little windows are not quite the detail I was hoping for, so I'm just gonna outline them with the black while I have it from the clock. There we go. And this is just your final little your final little detail before we finish the piece up. And one thing I like to do, so the very tips of these towers, they are actually have little gold detail. So I just got the mustard yellow on the very edge of my brush and it's quite, it's quite thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab the very tops of these towers with just a little bit of gold. And then this little one here just makes it look like the very tips. Very tips of gold. And then a few other little details you can do. I'm gonna just get a big glob, just like what we did with the yellow, but I have white just on the very uh, the very tip. And I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna add a few little details here and there. So just like this, the little dots we did on the roof here, I'm gonna add the same detail. I'm just gonna add little dots along these little balconies here. And with little dots, I'm just going to kind of play around. And with the white. And just make these windows just a little bit smaller. And you can add that white detail of little spots kind of along it, anywhere you'd like really. Just kind of makes this have a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth. I'm just going to follow along most of this tower. Really just make it ornate. Adding these little details. And add little bits of white here and there for a little last minute highlights. That's looking pretty good. And you can add just little bits of white here and there. Really showing the light hitting the side of the castle. And I think I'm pretty happy with uh, with our castle like this. So I very rarely will start and finish a piece all in one day. So if you want to play around with this for a few days, adding little details here and there, working on your highlights and your shading, I would wait to glue it until you are completely happy and satisfied with your with your piece just because it's much easier to add and take away the layers right now. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my little details here. And I'm going to add also some, actually some details to my flowers and to my leaves. So 
let's actually kind of put the castle aside and bring my uh, my flowers back in. And the flowers are actually quite easy to add detail to because of the engraved lines. So I'm going to grab some red. And I'm going to grab some white. Oh, I'm going to need a little more white than that. I'm really getting low on my white. There we go. And I'm going to put the black, but I'm going to put it way over here just so I don't go too crazy with that black. Get my brush nice and clean. I'm going to start by mixing these two together. And then I'm going to grab just a little bit of black. And what I want is I want a tone darker than the pink, than the pink below. So I think that's actually pretty good there. I like that this is a little bit more red. But if you um, make any tone darker than what you did your flowers, and then follow along the engraved lines, and you're going to want to add the paint in between the engraving. So the very edges, there's almost a double line all through the flowers. So you're just gonna wanna take your paint and you're just gonna wanna follow along. All along the inside of all these little engraved lines. That's going to give you some really nice detail on the flowers. And actually, you know what? I'm going to make it just a touch darker. So I'm going to grab just a little more black. Just a little more black. Let's see here. And actually, just a little more black. Usually, I go too crazy with black, and here I'm not going enough. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just going to follow along. until all your flowers have this really nice detail. And on these little ones, adding just a little bit of water. Could get a little bit of a finer point.
And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to take just a little bit of watery white. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of highlight here and there to the very edges of the petals. So you can just follow along. what would be actually open on the petals to the sun. too much water there. Perfect. And just going to do the, the same with our little leaves here. So I'm just going to use the white because I already have it all ready to go. But you can just add a little bit of highlight to the one side of the leaf. And this one's going to be on this side and this one's going to be on this side. So it's nice to know just what edge of it would be with the highlight. And I think I got a little bit of green here, I do. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of black to this green. And a little bit of water. And just, just a nice little simple simple highlight to the bottom, the bottom of any of the leaves. And then Once all your detail is done, you can just stack everything up. You can play around with how you'd like to place everything. And you can really get 3D. So if you put a layer below, you can actually stack on top. And with your wood glue, you can create some pretty neat little layers. So I think I'm actually gonna put these two flowers on top. So once you are happy with all the final detail of your piece, all the shading and the highlighting, the next thing to do is to, uh, to glue this all together. So I'm just gonna take all my little extras and set them aside. And I'm gonna take my top layer and I'm just gonna flip it over. And then you're gonna wanna get your, uh, your little pot of glue here and then there is a popsicle stick included, and this is how we're gonna put it all together. 
So I'm just gonna put my glue beside me here. And you don't need much glue to make this stick. So I just have a nice amount on the popsicle stick here and I'm just gonna spread it out. But it is a, um, a high quality wood glue. So it's not, you don't want globs and globs of it because as soon as you press the two layers together, quite a bit of the glue is gonna disperse and you just don't want too much coming out of your, um, coming out of your edges. But I am going to make sure that I have a little bit on each one of my towers. And I want to go all the way up to the top here, just so everything is adhered. And you want just a little bit up here because you don't want it to, to all see both the sides when you push the two ears together. And then I'm also going to take little bits and I'm going to follow around the frame here. I'm not going to put any on the little tabs for hanging just because I don't want to interfere with the string at all going into that area, so. Perfect, and I think I got a little bit in all my areas. So I'm just going to set the glue aside for now. And then I'm going to flip this over. And very carefully, I am going to just line up the two layers. And then add some pressure. And don't worry if you get a little bit of glue seeping. I have some as well, and we will take our our brush and we will just do a little touch up here. So just apply pressure. If you have clamps at home, you could clamp it. It's not necessary, but if you do have any lying around, you could uh, clamp this in and it just secures it all together. Perfect. And then if you have any glue seepage like I do, make sure your brush doesn't have any paint on it but I'm gonna get it just damp, and then I'm just gonna run it along the seams of anywhere where glue's coming out, and I'm just spreading that glue around into that seam, just so there's not a huge noticeable clump. There we go. I didn't think, oh, I got a little bit on the side of this one tower. There we go. And just double check everything's lined up before before this has a lot of tack. And because as soon as this sets, you won't be able to move it. It will be stuck in place. Perfect. And now I'm just going to take all my little extras and figure out what I'm doing with them. I think I'm going to go. So I'm going to get a little 3D with this one. And you can layer on top as long as you have a couple points of contact below anything that you want a little bit higher up. So I'm just going to 
get this all into place and making sure that I have a point of contact here and a point of contact here with this being on a third layer essentially. So you just want to kind of eye out. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good there. And like that. And then I was debating putting this one a little taller. The only issue is you don't, well, you know what, I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to do that there. So as you can see, it's not completely stable, but if we get a nice amount of glue, of contact under these two points and hold it until it sets, you, you would be able to, uh, to have this one 3D. Or um, if you have any spare wood from the insert that you pulled this out of, you could also create almost like a little razor underneath there to, to pull it up. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off the third layer ones. And in order to make sure I have all of these in the right place, I am just going to use my pencil and I'm just going to make a little line where this one goes and the edge of this one, just so when I pull it off and put glue on the back, I'm not sitting there trying to figure out how to get this adhered. I'm going to go right there with that leaf. You don't have to outline everything, but at least if you have one point of contact. So I just drew around this leaf here. So I'm gonna pick this up by this leaf, just so I remember that that's actually the one that's gonna be making contact there. And then I'm gonna put just a dab of glue on each one of these. And then I'm gonna line this up on there. And then I have a couple lines for the uh, the big banner here, so I'm just gonna this one, there, oh, and then went all the way over there, perfect. And then I'm just not second guessing. where everything was. And then also with something like this, this whole stem isn't going to be attached to anything, so I'm only going to put glue in the middle of these three leaves, just because the other glue will be unnecessary, and if it does drip at all, you could end up with just a little bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna just add glue to the three leaves, and I'm gonna realign this up. This is the one that I was just a little bit, just a little bit nervous about. So I'm going to want to go along the top and along this one here, and just a little bit of glue is all I'm going to want on the tops of all these. And I'm just going to want to hold on to this one until it's set. So just along the tops. And there we go. So just give it about, about 30 seconds just to really get, uh, really get some tack on there. And that's actually feeling pretty good. Yeah. 
and then you're really just going to want to let that dry before before you move anything around there at all. Okay, and I have that one on this side, and I'm just going to figure out. I think I like it just there. So then also with this one, the only parts that are making contact are here and here. So I'm just going to want to kind of make note of that as well and to not go too crazy with my glue anywhere else, but I'm just going to put a little dab there and a little dab there. And then just making sure I'm where I thought I was going to be. There we go. And if you have any glue seepage, just come back in with your damp brush and touch up anywhere you can see. Perfect. And then my last one here, I kind of want those two little thorns coming out to go just around that W. So I'm just going to need a little bit here and a little bit here. And then you're going to want to let this dry for about, I would say it'd be safe to do 24 hours just to make sure everything's set before you put it on your wall. You don't want to hang it up and then something fall off and then you gotta re-glue, but if you give it 24 hours everything will be completely set and this will be all ready to go. Perfect. I'm just double checking my little points of contact. Oh. And now that everything's glued doesn't mean that you have to be completely done your piece. If you see any little things, you can still touch up and still um, and still play around with anything that you'd like. Um, and actually one thing I thought about doing, I really like the way that this turquoise looks, but I was thinking it could use just a little something extra. So while this sets and before I put my string on, I'm actually going to add some little polka dots to the background. I think it's just going to look really cute and really finish this piece off. This is completely optional, but I just wanted to show you, you can, um, you can really have fun with the background and, uh, and make it your own. So I just opened up my white there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the bottom of my my detail brush. So it makes quite a perfect little round circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it in the paint and then I'm going to dip it on my background. So I'm just going to try to equally space these apart and you're going to have to dip and get paint as you go. And the key with polka dots is to do one line all in a row and figure out your spacing. And then alternate your next row just like what we did with the bricks. I think this is just going to add a really cute little personality to it. This would look really nice in a, in a Disney room or a little girl's room or... We have a Disney-themed spare bedroom, so I think this is going to go quite cute in there. So as you can see with this row, I have the dots spaced out like this, and then I have these ones spaced out equal apart in between the other dots. And you're just going to want to continue this all the way along. And you can wait and see how mine turns out before you decide if you add it in. And then also on the website, There'll be, um, as more and more people paint these, there's going to be more fun, uh, fun ideas on what you can do.
you can also do your your polka dots more random if you just kind of want to go crazy but I'm just gonna do mine with just a little bit of a little bit of spacing here And reloading. have to pull a bit more paint out just to finish off. Can get my there we go. Perfect. And I like it. Just to add a little something extra to my background before I finish it off. So don't be scared to, to play around and and have some fun and add any little personality quirks that you'd like to to your to your piece here. And then our very last step before we finish off is just our string here. So this is a cotton macrame cord. So be careful if you did add dots and they're still wet, just because you don't want to get your string in there. You'll end up messing up all the all that hard work you just did. So I'm just going to string my cord through. And I'm going to come over to the other side. And it's good to wait until your glue is completely dry to do this, but... So... And you can have fun and you can tie this in any way that you would like. I am just going to do a standard tie. So I'm just going to show me this down so you can see what I'm doing up with the string here. So I'm actually going to trim mine a little bit. So I'm going to tie this and I'm just doing just a standard loop. And I'm just going to trim off my little bit of excess. And just, uh, but there's lots of fun things if you look up cotton macrame online that you can do, but I like to just do a standard simple a simple knot, but you can get creative and have fun with it. And then uh, with the cotton macrame, it makes really cute little tassels. So if you just split the ends of your cord, you get a cute little tassel there. And then this one is all finished and ready to hang. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me and painting your uh, Where Dreams Come True kit. I hope you had fun. And uh, we'll see you next time.